Hey, welcome back to Rising Stars Live every single Friday, 8 a.m. Central Center Time. Today, I'm excited to go through another chapter of zero to six figures. Last week, I went through chapter one. This week, I'm going through chapter two, and it's a little shorter. It's all about goals and, and targets and like doing something special. Before I get to this, um, I want to do a few things. Number one, I want to encourage you to keep being a rising star. Okay, Who you listen to is really important. Being positive is really important. Doing the right thing for people is also really, really important, by the way, okay? Uh, we just came off our 8% virtual conference a couple weeks ago. It was absolutely fantastic. The speakers were phenomenal. They put, they, they dropped so many golden nuggets. I think, we had, I think we had, what, like 16, 17 total speakers, including myself, in one day with jam-packed material. The whole event was like seven hours-ish. Uh, uh, you can go to 8percentvirtual.com to grab that. I think it's only, only like 97 bucks to get the recording of the entire 8% Virtual Conference in a day at 8percentvirtual.com. Dylan can post a link if you're watching this in video format. Uh, but before we get into this, okay, I want to encourage you again to keep thinking about how you can be a better version of yourself. I'm actually reading another book right now um, called, it is called something about developing the leaders around you by John Maxwell. Um, I'm mostly through chapter one. I'm reading through this. I'm constantly consuming content. So I want to encourage you to do so like you're doing right now. It's really important. It keeps your keeps you learning. It keeps your mind right. And it keeps you in a very positive place, which is cool. Okay, so again, if you don't my book, Zero to Six Figures, you can grab the physical uh, paperback option co- copy on Amazon. We are recording this as part of the audio book so that you can listen to it in segments. I can also go and add it up later actually for sale as well. Okay, so we're going to dive in to chapter two. If you didn't, if you missed last week, go back and watch it. But chapter one was all about mindset, okay, habits, routines, uh, prospects, you know, motivation, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, some important stuff. Now let's jump into chapter two. Chapter two, goals that work. Let's talk more about goal setting because this is so important and we can't talk through it enough. Every successful person does this. To be successful, you have to set goals and I don't mean just any goals. Let's get specific. This is how I made $117,361.13 in my first year of sales at 19 years old during orientation when I was starting as a new agent. A veteran agent asked all 10 of us to stand up. Then he pointed to someone else and told them to stay standing and ask everyone else to sit down. I was one of the agents who were two was told to sit down. He told us that maybe one of us would make it. In those moments, I made a commitment to myself that I was going to make it and I would make 100K my first year. Then I wrote it on a piece of paper, dated it, and signed the paper. I put the piece of paper in my cubicle and I looked at that piece of paper every single day. Eight months later, I hit my goal of earning 100K from cold calling and door knocking with no purchase leads. Cold calling and door knocking are the hardest ways to get sales. But I set that goal and I was determined to hit it. Let's talk about the specifics of goal setting. The first thing you do when goal setting is to set your target. What is it that you want to accomplish? When I set the goal of making 100K my first year, I didn't say I'd like it or I want to do it. I said I will earn. 100k this year. I am going to earn 100k this year. These are specific goals. Notice I didn't say I might, probably may. No, I'm going to. Then date it and sign it. This is your commitment to yourself. The easiest person to lie to is you. So set goals, specific goals, and hold yourself accountable. Now that you have your goal for the year, break break it down into a monthly, weekly, and daily goal. If you want to make 100K, divide that by 50 weeks, taking two weeks for vacation. You will need to earn $2,000 a week. It's much easier to focus on making $2,000 a week than 100K a year. Know your numbers. Once you know you need to earn $2,000 per week to hit your $100,000 goal, how much will you need to sell each day? My average per sell amount was four to $500 per sell. That meant I needed to make five sales a week in commission to reach my $2,000 weekly target. This is why I stress about knowing your numbers so you can utilize my set, sit, sell model. For me to earn $2,000, knowing my average sale is $4,500, I needed to set 15 appointments each week. Of those 15 appointments, I had to sit with 10 and sell five out of the 10. 
Now your numbers may be different than mine, but I, I knew if I was sitting with 10, that I was selling to five of those appointments. So figure out what your numbers are so you can break them down, accomplish your goals on a daily basis. When should I set my goals? Every Sunday night, I prepare and write down my plan of action for the week. I will earn $2,000 this week. Take it seriously. I know some of you won't, but if you do, it'll pay off. If you're preparing for the week and setting yourself up, you can string together a phenomenal year one week, one week at a time. When you have one good week here and another good week after that, you build momentum. Make sure you win each and every week. When you string enough wins together on a week-by-week -week basis, this is how you will win this year. This applies to me too. When you look at me, you hear my story, you see how far I've come, and you might think I've made it, but I haven't. Here are some of the goals I'm working towards right now. Apris Nation has 10,000 agents in attendance. We sell a million dollars every 30 days, which I think we just hit. We generate over $10 million in total company revenue, or I'm sorry, $100 million in total company revenue. We own a beach house, a vision jet, and a helicopter, and we own 1,000 apartment units. Some of those are actually even small looking back from when I wrote this. Am I there yet? Nope. I haven't arrived, and I hope I never do. Wait, what? I haven't arrived yet, and I hope I never do. Because when I've arrived, it means I've stopped setting goals and growing, and I never want that to happen. I don't want you to fall short either. Set a goal, then set it bigger. Now it's time to reverse engineer your goal. If you're striving for $500,000 a year, break it down by the month, week, and the day. Know your numbers. Know what it takes. Activity. What does it take to make it happen? If you want that $500,000 a year and you make 20 appointments a week, is that enough? Is if 15 of them follow through and you complete eight sales a week, is that enough? Does that get you to your goal? How many people do you need to call to get those 20 appointments? What specific activity will it take to get you to your weekly goal? It's not enough to work through this goal process. You need to have it written down. Write down your goals daily, just like I did mine above. Write them down daily. You might look at my goals and think, ah, they're too big. But will I own a jet someday? Absolutely. freaking -lutely. Will I reach a million dollars a month? Of course, probably before I own a jet. Will there be 10,000 attendees at a conference? Probably within a few years. Will I help every salesperson in the world? Only time will tell. The point is that when I started out, I set much smaller goals. Now, every time I work through goal setting process, I think bigger. I see what it took to reach my smaller goals and I continue to strive for more. I'm committed to going bigger and helping more people. I wanna challenge you in your own business to set goals just like mine because I'm not special. If I can do this, so can you. And I am doing it. Can you reach goals like this? Absolutely. But to do it, you'll have to be creative. You'll have to think on another level and you'll have to be innovative. When I first started in the industry, I got groups of college students together on Monday nights to do cold calling. I paid them $10 for the first two appointments that they set each, and then $20 for each appointment that they set after that. I trained them and coached them through calls. I even bought them pizza and gave out gift cards throughout the night. Then I gave $100 to the person who set the most appointments for the week. I'm not saying you have to do this, but be creative. When I ran out of activity to do, I would go door knocking. On a Friday at a senior living facility, I'd, I'd, I'd knock on 50, 60, 80, sometimes even 125 doors. If you're like, dude, no way am I doing that. This doesn't have to be one of your methods, but you need some kind of activity so you can hit your weekly numbers. When you know your numbers and are doing whatever it takes to hit those numbers, you have a better chance of hitting your long-term goals. You also have to be committed to learning from other people. Go to conferences and retreats, watch videos, seek out a mentor, and never stop growing your business. Do whatever it takes, even if that means you have to cold call or door knock. Pick up the phone. This is one of the hardest things for agents to do. Just pick up the phone, and you've already done more than most are willing to do. Think about your last year and what you can learn from it. Then look into the future at your next year. Set your goals and think about every potential problem that could come up and take them all the way. What would you, what would hold you back from hitting your goal? It's important to know because it's probably going to happen. You need to be prepared. Once you've set your goals, reverse engineer them, break down your goals and make a plan of attack. Eliminate the excuses and put in the work. Think about a year from now. What will it take to reach that goal? Get it done. I promise you that a year from now, the feeling of success will be worth whatever work you had to put in. 
what it's what's it going to take every day and every week to get there create a weekly outline that breaks down what it takes to reach your big goal for the year write down your goals every morning and every night to get your mind focused and to get you hyped up strive for more and don't settle if you mind if you, i'm sorry if you find that week after week you're falling behind where you want to be reassess your goals it doesn't mean lowering them never ever lower your goals when I tell you to reassess, I mean that you should reassess your processes and your flow. What is working for you and what isn't? Are you dialing enough numbers? Are you setting enough appointments? How can you improve closing your sales? Find ways to duplicate your success and tweak the things that aren't working until you see improvements. Boom. There's chapter two. Okay, so I'm going to ad lib and talk through this a little bit. One of the things I just thought about is how much you can accomplish in a day right? Like how much you can actually accomplish in one single day. So let me explain. Okay. At the time of recording this, it's actually Tuesday, March 1st. This will technically air March, Friday, March 4th. Okay. So I'm, I'm, I'm talking through this about 70, 69 hours before it actually launches. And it's okay to share that. Dylan doesn't care. Okay. Like you guys know, I'm not actually recording it live, so you get it. But I share that because February 28th, um, January and February have been a couple of the most productive months of my career. And I mean, it's not always easy. Like you have team members leave or you have more money or more expenses, or you're trying to spend a million bucks on a conference or like you have stuff that comes up. Well, when I look back at February 28th, literally yesterday, I had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 things on my calendar yesterday. Some of you are like, dude, I have four appointments today, right? And I've got 18 things on my calendar just yesterday. And a few had to like reschedule and cancel. It's probably closer to 20. Well, why do I share that? Because like, it's amazing what you accomplish in a year, but it's also amazing what you can accomplish in a quarter, in a month, in a week, or even in a day. Like I get more, my team and I get more accomplished in a day a lot of times than most leaders get accomplished in a week. Well, why do I share that? Because I used to think I was working really hard, I was getting a lot done, but I wasn't maximizing the time I was here. I wasn't working with extreme urgency. Like I came in yesterday and my team knew that I meant business because of how much I had to get done and accomplished. And yes, we had one of our biggest revenue days ever. We had one of the biggest revenue commitment days ever that we didn't even collect that day. Um, I also added several speakers for 8%. Uh, we planned a bunch of surprise secret stuff for power players that I'm really trying to pull off for Puerto Rico, which is nuts. Um, I reached out and, and to a huge, someone that's known all around the world that's a massive celebrity that I'm trying to be a part of one of our events in the near future, and they got back to me. Um, like there's some of those things that I did a podcast. I had a um, couple of big Zooms. We had a rising star call. Well, if you're not a part of rising star, you need to be. Go to CodyAskins.com forward slash rising star. You can join for 88 bucks a month and you can do a private accountability and training and coaching and mentorship call every single Monday at 4 Central for an hour with me and a couple hundred other agents from around the world. And then we bring in co-host as well to be a part of that. Um I had some sponsorship calls. We nailed out a bunch of new sponsors. Like we had a lot going on. Well, I was, ex I mean, 6.30 hit and I was wiped. I was exhausted. Well, I was able to get a lot done though. Like that's the message of what we're talking about because you can get a lot more done than you think. Like we're normally not doing near as much as we think we can do. So when I think through this book, I accomplish way more than I ever dreamed I would years ago, but I accomplish it now, you know? Um, and so when I think through this book, I think about like goals and targets and yes, you can have big goals and big targets and all this stuff, but you can also work really hard to actually achieve it. So for example, if I were to diagnose some of these goals that I'm just sharing now, um, we'll see if people made it this deep in the podcast, by the way, like those, those that are, you're hearing some new stuff from me that you haven't heard by continuing to listen. I almost actually released a big idea of who the potential speaker was. Um, and maybe I should reward you for listening to this podcast and getting deep in this podcast because the person that's known around the globe that reached back out to me through Instagram DMs was actually Tim Tebow. Okay. Side note. 
Uh, but if I look at some of the goals I talked through in this chapter, I talked about 8% Nation has 10,000 agents in attendance. We'll have 2,000 in attendance in person and we'll have uh, another couple thousand online this year. Um, we sell a million dollars every 30 days. Well, all of our companies did over a million bucks in the last 30 days. I would say just two of our companies, just two, probably did about 900,000 in February. Uh, we generate over a hundred million in total company revenue. Hey, we'll get there for sure. I mean, this year we'll probably do 30 between all of them. Right. But, but it, it seems so weird to say it because I don't even realize some of the success that we're having because I'm just so like driven by the purpose and the passion and what really my calling is in life that I kind of forget to stop and realize how much we've actually been able to do, which is pretty cool. Uh, beach house, vision jet, helicopter, all that will happen in the next couple of years. Um, thousand apartment units, that'll probably happen in the next couple of years. My wife wants to buy five to ten million dollars in real estate this year in 2022. We've already um, we've already agreed to buy a million dollars worth. No, probably more like wait six. Uh, that's probably seven hundred thousand, um, eight hundred thousand. I mean, we're getting close to two mil in like the last several weeks. Um, so it's just amazing what you can accomplish when you do something special. Also, this book that I'm reading um, by John Maxwell, who I will definitely get 8% one day for sure. Need to do it soon, honestly. Um, he shares that in this book, Developing the Leaders Around You, how the better your team is and your company is from a leadership standpoint and from a personnel standpoint, the farther your company will grow. Well, I'm starting to realize how valuable and important that really is. You know, like I look at our company a few years ago, even a year ago, and it just wasn't near as good as it is today. Two years ago, it was worse. Three years ago, it was even worse. Four years ago, it was even worse. Um, but the great people from that time, um, like our videographer, Dylan, right, in charge of all of our media and everything else, he stood out. He was an incredible individual, super talented, probably the most talented person on the team back then. And guess what? He, he's one of the few that actually survived. Well, I don't mean as a surviving a bad thing, but I mean that like, hey, for our for all this to get better, for us to impact people around the world and do a bunch of cool stuff, we need special people. Like the personnel is, is a big piece. So you may be at a rising star and this may not register today, but eventually it will. And when you think about later in life, when you start building a team or adding people, or maybe your manager needs to hear this or, or your upline, you need to share it with your company or whatever, right? Maybe they need to realize that the personnel piece is important. Like you want to attract agents to your company in your office have a bunch of really cool successful awesome attractive high lid high leadership people on the team already then you'll attract better people i mean so that's a cool place that we've started to come with all of our businesses and companies and everything we're doing that uh it's really starting to get fun you know and and i wouldn't say that it was always per se like fun um but it's fun for me because, and we keep adding people, but when you have incredible people, it allows you, and you take more off your plate and you delegate, it actually allows you to do more than you think. And so maybe we'll do a power player podcast where I dive into this deeper in the future, just me. But I can share, I can, I'm can. i gonna share some of this in Puerto Rico. I've got to speak at a NAFA event in St. Louis on Thursday. Um, that's National Association of Insurance and Financial Advisors. They get over 20,000 members. I speak to them in St. Louis on, on uh, Thursday. And then I go to San Antonio to speak to the Blue Cross of Idaho and all their top agents. And I speak to them um, in San Antonio. Well, those are the messages that I'm going to share at those type of gatherings and groups and engagements and conferences and, and, and opportunities because that's what they need to hear. Like most people in the industry, even if you are a rising star and you produce a lot and you do a lot and you accomplish a lot, there's going to come a point where you end up having to do it all. And you're earning hundreds of thousands of dollars a year, but you're doing it all. It's not, it's not as fun as it used to be. So when you can focus on what you do well and have fun and do the things that you do best, then it gets really fun. You know, then it gets really, really fun. Um, so I'm trying to figure out how long I've been actually talking on this podcast so far. And if I had to guess, I'm probably getting really close to 20 minutes, but I may not be there because this chapter was so much shorter. Okay. Normally, a lot of podcasts are like 30 minutes. This one's going to be a little shorter today. Uh, here's, here's one thing I want to leave you with, okay? If you don't have the book, Zero to Six Figures, um, keep listening as I do these, but grab it. It's like, that's under 20 bucks. 
Okay, you can do that on Amazon, zero to six figures. Also, too, you can go and um, I'll, we're going to take all these recordings of these Rising Star podcast episodes. We're going to take the audio from all of them and put them into a book, um, an audio book that you can actually purchase as well because we keep getting asked about the audio every couple days and I just haven't taken time to do it. Like I can't blame, oh, we're busy or this or that. I can't make excuses. Hey, accept responsibility, right? It's my fault. I should have recorded it sooner because we can make time for whatever's important. That's what I've learned in life, you know? So um, as you think about this, okay, I, I don't know if you believe in yourself, but you are a rising star. You were meant to do something special in the world. You were created for a purpose to really go do something purposeful and that you're passionate about. I was watching um, The Prophet with Marcus Lemonis. I, I bought season eight and I've been watching it. That's the most recent season from last year. The Prophet, P-R-O-F-I-T, Money Prophet. Um, not Bible prophet. And he was, there's the, I think it was episode three. I think so. And it was um, the guy that was, uh, had a baking company. It was like James Gourmet or something. But the guy didn't know how to bake. He didn't know what was in his own recipe. He's the owner. And he didn't have a passion for baking. And I'm like, dude, why would someone ever invest in a company where the person running it doesn't have a passion for it, doesn't know what's in the ingredients, doesn't know how to bake it, oh, and doesn't bake. Doesn't even know how to make cookies. I'm like, you know what I mean? So what I share that because you need to be, to be highly successful at something in life, you need to be super passionate about it. You need to care about it a lot. And when you do, other people see that and then you can become even more of a, rising star if you will so appreciate you listening to rising star uh, a podcast go grab the book if you haven't and we'll see you on the next one hey if you enjoyed this i got another one you're gonna love it's right there click on it see you in there so here's the formula i'm gonna walk through five specific steps to help you gain more self-confidence and belief in yourself and really start to make this picture really clear okay because when the picture gets clear right when the picture gets clearer